Melody. Ah, scared myself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's so good to see everybody here today. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning, the, the kind of morning we've been hoping for for a long time. So I have uh, a reminder to please, please read your announcements in the bulletin. Not everybody is involved in everything, so check over the things that are important to you and try to participate. And um, let's see here. Um, the Idaho Gives opportunities, that's talked about in our announcements as well. So please pay attention to that. That's gonna be this week for four days. Um, there are many organizations that need our help. So no matter what, you, if you can donate $5 or $500, either will be welcome. Um, we have our noisy offering today, so I hope you came prepared for that. And then we have a very important announcement from our, are you, are you the president of our council? Vice, vice, vice president. This is Carl, Carl Radke. Hello. I just want to announce that uh, Pastor Megan is now the bishop of the synagogue. So, we are very happy for that. And um, Tammy will lead us in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Pastor Megan, for her faithful leadership and ministry to the people of this congregation and community. Grant her wisdom, courage, and vision as she prepares to serve as Bishop of the Northwest Intermountain Synod. Surround Megan with your love and uphold those who care for her. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Well, that's pretty exciting. I'm not surprised, though. No. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Yeah. It looks like he did what you said. That's good. All right. If we can uh, stand and face the font in the back, we'll begin our service. In your hymnal, turn to page 94 if you're not there already. The page number at the bottom. Page 94. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. 
You can turn to hymn number 364. The hymn says, I mean, the number of the bulletin says 369, but that's not correct. So <laughs> we're going to make just a little change for Christ Has Arisen, page 364. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. page 147. All right, start over. <laughs> the peace of 
O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name, and you lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bed and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bed at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Please join me in reading the poem responsibly as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your namesake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup, and my cup is running over. Second lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19 through 25. It is a credit to you, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his words, by his wounds, you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and garden, guardian of your souls. Word of the God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. 
So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. The children are invited to come <coughs> forward. I decided to do a very impromptu, everything's impromptu when the pastor's gone, <laughs> um, ch children's message. So I was wondering if you guys have ever heard of the golden rule. Yes. That'd be good. Anybody else? Well, um, a long time ago, in, in Bible times, Jesus was giving a sermon on, on the mount, and he said, one of the things he said that was very profound is do unto others <laughs> as you would have them do unto you. And basically, what that means is, does anybody have any ideas what that might mean? What do you think? Apples? No, not quite. But <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking about how we treat other people. So the verse is telling us that when we are with our friends or with our family or with people we don't even know, we need to treat those people like we like to be treated. So if you like to be treated with kindness, if you like to be treated with respect, then what do you think? Then you need to take it upon yourself to treat others with love and respect and kindness. Can you think of an example that you can um, do for others that would send this message of kindness and love? Yes, you would treat others how you want to be treated. How is that like, would that be like maybe helping them? Helping them with something that they need help with? Or it would be maybe sharing food or giving of your noisy offering that we're doing today. But lots of ways that you can give and show love and respect to your neighbors. And then you know what? They show the same love and respect back to you. So that's a wonderful thing. Can we have a short prayer this morning? You can repeat after me real quick. Loving God, loving God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Help us to remember to treat others with love and respect. Help us remember to treat others with love and respect. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. I don't have anything to give you, but thank you. I appreciate you coming up. You want to take that back? Thank you. Good morning. I have the pleasure of reading um, a sermon prepared by our current Bishop, Kristen Kumpel. Greetings and blessings to God's people in the Northwest Intermountain Synod. The Synod is gathered together this weekend in assembly in Pasco, Washington. The Synod Assembly is the highest governing body in our Synod, where rostered leaders and voting members elected by each congregation meet to conduct important business in the Synod. The Assembly spends time in worship, 
time with a representative sent by our churchwide partner in Chicago, votes on resolutions that are presented to it, and holds elections for various positions of synod leadership. It's always a full and busy weekend, but this weekend is particularly busy with multiple elections, including, but not limited to, electing a bishop, a new synod vice president, and churchwide assembly voting members. Serving as a synod assembly voting member is an important calling that helps our synod function within our own borders, but also with other synods and the national body. Our theme for this year's assembly is Bega Qua Bega, a phrase that we were introduced to in 2019 by pastors Moses and Eliad, our visitors from Tanzania that year. It is a phrase that translates into walking together, but it's a little bit more than that. It's walking together with our arms around one another's shoulders, helping to bear one another's burdens, being good companions to one another. It's a good phrase. This weekend, whether your congregation follows the revised common lectionary or the narrative lectionary, one of your key readings comes from the book of Acts or Acts of the Apostles. The book begins with Jesus' ascension into heaven and continues to chronicle the way the early Christian church walked together to figure out how to be something new in a world that was pretty firmly set in its ways. The Roman emperor, Empire held most of the known world in the iron grip of Pax Romana, the foundation of secular life and religious traditions were centuries old in the time of Acts. Christianity was indeed God doing a new thing in a world that gave every impression of being implacably settled and immovable. For years, the church read Acts as a history. Here's how we did things a long time ago when we were new and not a major shareholder on the world's religious stage, when we were the underdogs, when there weren't centuries of traditions and history to guide our decisions, when we had to lean hard into the Holy Spirit and try audacious things. The church learned and really internalized the scripture that with God, all things are possible. Now, those of us who have the benefit of centuries of Christian teachings and history to draw from find ourselves in a similar situation to those first followers of the way of Jesus. But instead of a world that seems implacable and immovable, we are in a world that seems to change more quickly than we are able to comprehend. And rather than having the comfort of common grounding in either secular life or religious tradition, we find ourselves challenged on almost every level, being asked to do more with less across all aspects of our lives, watching the world burn, and in some cases, quite literally. We are witnessing our political leaders fail to lead in any way other than fanning the flames of dissension and disagreement. Realities which often get brought into the doors of our churches with accusations of leaders either being too political or not political enough. In Acts, we learn that the followers of the way of Jesus 
devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings of Jesus and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayers. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their goods and possessions and distribute the proceeds to all, to any who had need. The early church figured out the best way to be church was to bega qua bega, to walk arm in arm and shoulder to shoulder, sharing burdens and easing needs. They gathered in fellowship, worship, and prayer. They didn't worry about what belonged to whom or how much they could afford to give the church or the political climate of the day. They simply learned from the apostles about Jesus and took care of one another and any that had need. This is church. This is following Jesus. Some of you might be getting a little uncomfortable. Some of you might feel like I'm getting a little political because what I'm talking about might be considered socialism. Some of you might be getting a little self-righteous because you've been saying this all along. But here's the thing. Jesus, by Jesus' very nature, is a person with whom we are going to have to struggle, regardless of who we are or what our individual ideologies are. Jesus asks us to believe impossible things, that a man will rise from the dead, that God can and does look upon us with love rather than judgment. And the love of neighbor is the greatest commandment that God can give. And that love of neighbor can transform us and the world. Perhaps the most uncomfortable of all, that the neighbors we are called to love are those who don't think like us, believe like us, worship like us, or even look like us. When we say all are welcome, we do truly mean all. No one is excluded from the love and grace of God, even if we think they should be. Heaven doesn't have a bouncer. There are no morality police in the hereafter. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. You, me, all. The book of Acts gives us a map of sorts to follow how we can live into this radical, loving neighborliness. This care that goes beyond all earthly labels to see ultimately a beloved child of God, a person worthy of God's love, a person all people are created some way in God's own image. And while we often stumble over what it is to be created in God's own image, we get tangled up in the thought that it means we physically look like God, but that indeed means that those who don't look right are often set aside as being unwanted. I have a different idea. What if the image of God that exists within us is this holy, sacred ability to see past the labels humanity assigns to one another and love? Just love. If we're hungry, make a sandwich. If we're cold, offer a blanket without worrying if someone is worthy of such help, but living bega qua bega, together, shoulder to shoulder, loving God and loving one another. 
One of my favorite hymns is What Wondrous Love Is This? What wondrous love is this that accepts us where we are but doesn't leave us there? What wondrous love is this that asks us to challenge the status quo by loving, not because we all get along, but because God loves us? As you prepare to welcome home your rostered leaders and voting members back from the Synod Assembly, and as you continue your congregational experience with the Book of Acts, I encourage you to really listen to these stories. Pray about what God wants you to learn from them. For behold, God is about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Thanks be to God for the love we receive and the love we are asked to give. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of the day, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, number 502. Please stand as you are able. continue with the new creed from the United Church of Canada. It is printed in your bulletin, starting on the inside second page. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. Hear the call to the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, and in life and death, and life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. United in the hope and joy of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all we need.
You are the shepherd who guides us in our mighty and loving arms. Help, our, help your church to listen for your voice, especially the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threatening to overpower us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The green pasture still waters and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O oh Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there's destruction, bring healing. Where there's desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servants hearts and that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your journey with us, wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the sharp gates that gives safety to your, to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mis mistreatment. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our rising Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace of Christ with those around you. May be seated. We're having our offering at this time. We'll have our initial offering and then we'll do our noisy offering. So.
is having too much fun. That's good, though. Okay, um, as we sing our offering song, uh, then we'll have our offering prayer here. It's now the Feast and Celebration, page 167. <coughs> Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of earth, and the breaking of this bread reveals to us the rising one. In the pouring of this wine, pure us out of ser in service to the world. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up the people. I don't know why I'm having such a time today. Go ahead. she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. 
he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Shall we pray the Lord's Prayer together, please? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll be serving as serv servants first and those who cannot come forward. Um, as you know, the, on the um, cups, the wine is on the outside, juice is on the inside. We do have a gluten-free selection if you need that for the bread right here. Um.
drill spray? You may go ahead and stand up if you may. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your words and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Our sending hymn today is hymn number 764, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Thank you everyone for your gracious oh, graciousness you. in our um, substitutions here. <laughs> Appreciate it. I think there's coffee today, right? Coffee hour? Yep. Okay. Go. Go in peace. All right, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I love this church. I love this church. <laughs>